with faith to face our challenges, with love that casts out fear, with hope to trust tomorrow, we accept this day as the gift it is, a reason for rejoicing. my own sanity. 
So to say I was pissed off is kind of an understatement, and I wasn't the only one. Many of our couples who had weddings planned at our venues suddenly found themselves without a place to be married, and all of their money was gone. They were justifiably angry, but they couldn't take it out on him. He was safely behind bars, away from most of the wrath, so they took it out on me instead. They blamed me, accused me, hated me. No one wanted to listen to my side of the story. They didn't care, they just wanted someone to yell at. So I became their scapegoat, their proverbial punching bag. They sent hate mail, made threats. It was terrifying. And I broke a little more and a little more. I hated my friend for what he had done. I suddenly found myself not only without a job, but thrown right in the middle of a scandal that he created. And there was nothing I could do about it. And to make it worse, my own photography business started to suffer. My clients were leaving me. They didn't trust me anymore. And to be honest, I wanted to die. The pain was too much, and I just wanted it to go away. Thank goodness I am married to the most remarkable and patient man who ever walked the earth. He was there for me the whole time, helping to sweep up all those shattered pieces. He was always supportive, always caring, and without him, I doubt I would be here to share this experience. But even with my husband, that's something that had broken inside me, I really felt that it could never really be fully repaired. I didn't think it could be fixed at all. The anger and hurt washed over me day after day. There were too many broken pieces, and I felt like garbage. No one wants something that's broken. Trust is a fundamental part of being human. We must learn to trust in others in order to form any lasting bonds. To trust someone is to be able to believe in their reliability, truth, and strength. You can trust in a person or an organization, and to trust them, really trust them, means you will support and defend them. But what happens when that trust is broken? There is going to be a time in your life when someone or something breaks your trust. I am almost entirely certain that no one sitting in this room at this moment has ever gotten through life this far without having experienced the breaking of their trust. Maybe some of you have even broken someone else's trust. It happens. But sometimes it can be repaired. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes the damage is too great. Those shattered pieces will forever stay broken and all the king's horses and all the king's men will never be able to put them back together again. And maybe that's okay. Sometimes it's better to leave the pieces where they are. And yet, there are times when we can rebuild. At the very least, you can learn to put your trust in others again. Learning to trust again after it has been broken can be hard. You let your guard down once and you got hurt. And opening yourself up to that again can be scary and painful. There are no guarantees that say you won't get hurt again. But we need to be able to trust in others in order to lead a more fulfilled life. So how can we do that? How can we repair those cracks that have so damaged us and learn to believe in others again? I am going to touch on a few simple guidelines that may help. Keep in mind, these are not fail-safe solutions. If you really want to learn to trust again, you have to be open to it. You have to put in the work and the time and if you are really struggling, it may be a good idea to seek professional help through a therapist. The first step to trusting again is probably the hardest. At least, it certainly has been for me. Step one is to accept your own vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities. Vulnerability doesn't mean weak. It simply means being able to open yourself up to others. You have to be able to put yourself, uh, 
uh, out there and take a few risks. That can be super hard, especially if the pain you are experiencing is especially difficult. But if we build walls around our heart and let no one in, we cannot experience the joy that comes from positive relationships. <laughs> we avoid the pain of heartbreak, but we also shut out love. A good way to practice vulnerability is to take it in baby steps. Find someone you do trust, even just a little. A family member, a close friend, a therapist. Share your feelings with them. You can keep it simple at first. Remember, baby steps. But learning to reach out to others, even with the small things, will go a long way towards building more trust in the future. Okay, I lied. Learning to be vulnerable isn't the hardest thing. Step two is the hardest. Because step two is forgiveness. Oh boy. I could give an entire talk on this one step alone. And this one can be especially tough for some people. It may take a long time to forgive, and that's understandable. And you certainly have a right to feel angry about any damage done to you. But remember, forgiving someone doesn't mean you will go running back to them. It simply means you are willing to finally let go of the burden of pain. Forgiveness is not to condone their actions. It is simply to say, I will not hold this pain with me any longer. So give yourself permission to let go. From time to time, you may still feel those twinges of anger or hurt, and that's okay. But you don't have to carry it every day. And be aware of the perpetual victim mentality. Yes, you were hurt, and that's not fair. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel that pain. It's okay to wallow in bed with a giant tub of ice cream while sad songs play on the radio. But don't let that pain continue to eat at you. Don't let it take over your whole life. My friend held on to his own victim mentality and it only made things worse for him. It consumed him until he became so bitter and angry he could no longer think clearly. And once he was able to let that go, things started to really change for him. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. <clears throat> Once you have learned to forgive someone else and let go of all that pain, you can move on to step three. Trust yourself. Listen, we all make mistakes. But when you have been particularly hurt by someone or something, you may feel like you have, are the one that made the gross judgment and error. You may even feel you are partly to blame for the betrayal that happened. Thoughts such as, I should have known better, or I'm such an idiot, how could I have not have seen the signs? Those might start creeping in. You cannot learn to trust others if you can't even trust your own judgment. But remember, just because you were hurt doesn't mean it was your fault. Chances are you were not even remotely responsible. A good exercise is to think of all the choices you have made that have a positive outcome. Here's a big one, ending the negative relationship. You are willing to say to yourself, you were in a bad situation and you got out. Even if it hurt more than anything, you trusted yourself enough to know that you shouldn't be in that situation anymore. And from there, you can think about other positive choices you've made in your family, your career, your health, and maybe other relationships you might have. It may surprise you how often you have made very positive and even life-changing decisions. Step four, consider future possibilities. Just because one person or group may have hurt you doesn't mean others will. If you open yourself up to new people and new things, you may yet experience some of the greatest moments of your life. There is really no way, no way to tell until you jump in. But if you stay closed, then your chances of experiencing any great moments with anyone decrease drastically. And perhaps you have learned a few new things along the way that you can take with you into future relationships. 
Your expectations may be a little bit higher, you may be more wary and watchful, and you may be a little less tolerant of negative behavior. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. You can be stronger and wiser than before without putting up huge barriers. And finally, step five, share your story. When you are ready to let someone new into your life, be open and honest about your past experience. Let them see your vulnerabilities, but also let them see that you are a stronger person now. And maybe that they have had a similar experience. Sharing those personal moments with someone demonstrates a great amount of trust in them, and oftentimes will create a much stronger bond between you. After many months of my own grief and pain, I was ready to start my own process of healing. I actually did reach out to my friend again. I wanted to know why. Why did he do it? Why did he make such awful choices and hurt me so badly? And he told me. You see, he was hurting too. Someone he loved betrayed him. But he held on to all of that pain. He let it cloud his judgment, and it led him down a very, very dark path. And once he started down it, he couldn't figure out how to get off of it again. It took being arrested in order for him to finally stop and see all the wrong he had committed and all the pain he had caused, and it truly devastated him. I still hated what he did, but I stopped hating him. And I genuinely wanted him to change his life and become a better person again. I knew him before everything went wrong, and I felt strongly that he could be that person again. So I decided to give him a second chance and be a support for him. It was either the most selfless thing I've ever done or the dumbest thing I've ever done. I don't necessarily recommend going back to those that once hurt you, but sometimes that can be a good part of the healing process. And I'm a pretty firm believer in second chances. And you know what? He has changed. These past few years during his incarceration, I have watched him surmount the most challenging obstacles. I have seen him hit rock bottom and then get back up and keep on climbing. He is determined to repair the damages that he has made and pay back all the money he owes, which will likely take the rest of his life, and earn back the trust of the people he cares about the most. It's going to be a long, long road, but I think he can do it. As for me, I admit I'm a little bit more worried about my friendships, but by opening up to others about my past experience, that has actually helped heal a lot of my own pain. And even though my relationship with my own friend will never be what it once was, I am actually learning to very cautiously trust in him a little again, too. I can see the changes he has made in his life, and I am very hopeful that he will find success and happiness in his life again. Remember, being broken doesn't mean the damage is permanent. In Japan, there is a wonderful form of vault called kintsugi, or kintsukori, which literally means golden repair. In this art, they take broken pieces of pottery and repair the damage with liquid gold or silver, and the result is startling. Not only is the object repaired, but the veins of metal running through the piece are both strong and beautiful. What was once a plain piece of pottery can become a real work of art. So with a little work, a little love, a little bit of patience, you can put the pieces together again. Even if your soul looks a little bit different, it can still be stronger. So, let the gold run through your veins and shine out a little bit brighter and more beautiful than ever before. Thank you. Yeah.